you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Boss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Wait, I'm the host? Am I, am I the host? The, the host, Chris Voss? That's me. Oh, hey guys, Chris Foss here, the Chris Foss Show. Welcome, welcome one and all to the Chris Foss Show. .com. Hey guys, thanks for coming by. We certainly appreciate you guys. Once again, uh, I don't know, I have some fun with that. Here's your host, Chris Foss. I'm like, I was sitting here going, wait, I thought Neil was the host here, the, my guest uh, today. But uh, we're going to get into him more later. But in the meantime, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. If you haven't gotten a chance, go uh, write a review of the podcast on iTunes. Best place to go there is uh, you click the review tab. Tell them how much you love the show and uh, how great it is. You know, we won't do another one until I get more reviews. Uh, no, nah, we're not going to do that. Uh, they seem to come because you guys are so wonderful. And remember, the Chris Voss show is the family that loves you but doesn't judge you. Uh, go to YouTube.com for Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. You know the drill. Tell other people to do it because, uh, I don't know, telling other people what to do is kind of fun half the time. That's what I do. Uh, go to Goodreads.com for Chris Voss. Uh, see what we're reading and reviewing over there. All my groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, the big 132,000 LinkedIn group. And uh, what else is there? The LinkedIn newsletter. That thing is killing it over there. It's pretty uh, interesting. People love those uh, newsletter things over there. Uh, today, we have an amazing author on the show. Of course, we have some of the most brilliant minds that come to us and share all their wonderful knowledge because I have none. And uh, today, we have Neil Bradbury, uh, PhD. He is a doctor. So we're going to learn all sorts of doctor stuff. Uh, you guys will be smart after this. Uh, and some of you may be uh, smarter in ways that, I don't know, might I, maybe they wouldn't be good. I don't know. We'll, we'll leave it up to you. Uh, we'll talk about it some more. He is the author of the new book, February 1st, 2022. And the book is called A Taste for Poison. 11 Deadly Molecules and the Killers Who Use Them. We're going to be talking about his amazing new book. And uh, this is going to be pretty insightful, especially for some of you guys who are really obsessed with watching, you know, csi and all those murder mysteries and stuff like that i always have my eye on you people i give you a slant eye i watch you guys with one eye open when i sleep um neil bradbury he grew up in manchester england and always had a deep interest in science interest in science uh he studied biochemistry at the university of st andrews in scotland where he had the opportunity to work with poisons he graduated with a degree in biochemistry with honors and decided to further my education or his education not mine uh he can do that if he wants after this uh his education by studying for a phd in medical biochemistry at the welsh national school of medicine in cardiff wales uh he focuses efforts on the study of genetic disease cystic fibrosis uh he then moved to the u.s to continue medical research because uh i mean but he became a Yankee, I guess, basically. Is that how it works? We won't get fooled again. Uh, first, the University of Alabama uh, at Birmingham, and then the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. He's currently a professor of physiology and biophysics at the Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science in North Chicago, Illinois. Welcome to the show. How are you, Neil? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks so much for inviting me. It's really exciting to be here, and I'm looking forward to chatting with you about the book. I'm looking forward to chatting with you, too. Uh, you, did you get my uh, We Won't Get Fooled Again, the Who reference? No? I did not get that. Oh, wow. Okay, well, you're, I mean, you're kind of, you're younger than I am, so uh, that's probably what it is. For those of you who can look up what that joke means, it has something to do with the revolution. Anyway, uh... <laughs> But we, I'm glad we repatriated you, for those who are having trouble following along, from England to uh, America and turned you into, I guess, a Yankee, if you will. But you still have your British accent, so welcome. <laughs> I, I still have that. I've, I've actually lived in the States more than I ever lived in England, yeah, so well. it's uh, surprising that I still have it. Still God Save the Queen. We love her. Uh, give, the, uh, uh, give us your plugs, your .com, so people can find you on the interwebs. So on the interweb, you can find me on www.neilbradbury.org. There you go. There you go. So uh, what motivated you want to write this book? 
Well, there's a couple of things that uh, really forced me to write it. I've always been interested in science. Even growing up at school, I wanted to take as many science classes as I could. I really loved the subject and decided that I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. Um, so I was able to stay in academia and not actually get a proper job. Um, I could stay <laughs> in universities. Um, I've also done a, a lot of research, but I've also moved into doing a lot of teaching and uh, talking about the various uh, human body aspects um, in lectures. Uh, but I've also been interested in murder mysteries, uh, oh. particularly Agatha Christie and all the poisons that she used. And I just figured, well, maybe this would be a good way of actually introducing how the body works, the physiology to students in class. And then I figured, well, maybe, you know, Agatha Christie and novels is one thing, but perhaps there are some real life murders um, and poisons that they use that could be uh, used as illustrations in class. And so I started doing that. Uh, students seemed to like it. And I started incorporating more and more murders into my classes. And eventually I figured, well, maybe everybody else is going to be interested in this. And so I started writing the book, uh, partly to increase my own understanding of poisons and how the body works, but also to share it with a broader audience. There you go. So uh, has your wife had a side eye on you? Uh, keep one eye open while you've been writing this book, wondering what you're up to? She has had a few concerns when I was writing the book and doing research on the internet. Um, I had left a few websites open uh, that were of a concern to her. Um, but I, I think uh, I finally did convince her that I, I was writing a book. And of course, when it uh, was finally published, um, I really was uh, learning and doing material for the book and so she is perfectly safe there you go i'm just learning honey i'm i have uh i'm just understanding these things i am a chemist by trade so there you go i just think it's funny you know i i have so many friends that either their wives or husbands uh watch a lot of those csi murder things and i'm like I'm like, you know, I, I watched a few of them myself, and that's when I decided that I would never kill anybody because I'd be dumb enough to make all the mistakes you possibly could make to 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 uh, to uh, get caught. And, of course, you never should do that, I should say. The attorneys make me say that, by the way. Um, but never dig up my backyard, please. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, give us some uh, tips on... Uh, um, uh, you know, some of the different... Uh, are these... You, you mentioned molecules in the title. Uh, is is that different than, uh, say, poison like uh, arsenic or what, what are molecules? Yeah, what, what is the reference so there? We generally think about poisons and we also hear about toxins mm -hmm. and they're kind of similar, but they're a little bit different. So poisons uh, generally refer to both things that occur naturally, so things that come from plants, uh, but they could also come from uh, synthetic sources. So mm -hmm. sarin gas, for example, would be a poison. It's not something that naturally occurs. It's man-made. Mm -hmm. uh, toxins tend to be exclusively natural things. Mm -hmm. um, but they still both mess up the normal functioning of the body. So it's a little semantic difference. And then the, the other word that we often come across is venom, uh, which is really another animal-based poison, but it tends to be a poison that's injected either through fangs or from a, a scorpion sting or, or a bee sting. But generally, they're all the same thing. They refer to something that gets into the body and disrupts its normal functioning. Mm -hmm. With stuff like, uh, you know, where people got poisoned from uh, the Russian government, uh, no Novichok? Novich the Novichok. Novichok, yeah. Uh, is that, does that fall into that category? Uh, Novichok would definitely fall into the category of poison. It's not something that's natural. It's definitely man-made mm -hmm. and it is definitely a poison. It's really nasty. Uh, the problem with something like Novichok is that you only need a very, very small amount of it and it mm -hmm. can be absorbed through the skin. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Novichok, the poison was actually squirted onto a door handle. So oh. when people closed their front door, uh, the scripals in this case, they absorbed poison directly through their skin. Oh, wow. 
touching anywhere else on the door uh, wouldn't give you any poisoning at all. It's uh, just very specific to where that poisoning is, which means it's very hard to find exactly where it is because you mm -hmm. could just be an inch away from where the poison is and not detect it at all. It's oh. only where it was specifically placed. Wow. Do you, is ricin included in that book? I remember living in Las Vegas. We had somebody who was making ricin. I believe that's how it's pronounced in, in one of the ricin, <laughs> Yeah, ricin is in place. Okay. Uh, in the book uh, uh, and again that this is uh, a really interesting one this is actually uh, one of the stories that really fascinated me uh, as a child um, in high school because an assassination of uh, a bulgarian defector occurred through ricin uh, oh, wow. and uh, in this case it was actually involving an umbrella um, as the yeah. delivery tool so um, that during the communist era? This was during the communist era. The Soviet yeah. bloc was still there. Um, Georgi Markov uh, was a Bulgarian uh, who was originally fairly high up in the Bulgarian Communist Party, but can, became very disillusioned and came over to the UK and started broadcasting into the Soviet Union saying, everybody how terrible Soviet life is and they should overthrow and uh, become a democracy. And of course, the Bulgarians didn't take too kindly to that and decided to take him out and used ricin, uh, which is a natural poison. It comes from the castor bean plant. So many of you are probably familiar with castor oil. Many of us took it as kids or, or are given it um, as kids. Um, ricin comes from exactly the same plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and is very, very toxic. It only needs a small amount of rice in uh, to kill someone. Yeah, I was reading about it. The guy had been making it in uh, his his uh, Las Vegas hotel room, and I think he was trying to assassinate somebody or somebody, and he ended up, you know, I, I, I can't remember if he died, but he ended up, you know, poisoning himself and <laughs> stuff and ending up at the hospital. Uh, and uh, so they were trying to figure out what he was up to and if it was like, uh, if, if he really intended to do it and stuff, because it's kind of like a natural occurring thing. But now that we've triggered all the keywords for the CIA, the FBI, and the National Security, <laughs> the NSA, let's talk about your book some more. So uh, you talk about some different things. Uh, it uh, you uh, uh, Here's a good question for you. It's often believed that women are usually p the poisoners. Is this true? And why are women getting blamed for that, eh? I would think, I mean, most serial killers are men, I think, aren't they? Most serial killers probably are men. Uh, for some reason, poisoning seems to have gotten the assignment of being a, a woman's poisoner. Really? Certainly, if you're going to poison someone, it doesn't take a lot of strength. All it takes is dripping a few drops into a drink and it will kill someone. So it doesn't take a lot of strength. Um, we think historically of people like Lucretia Borgia, who mm. was a very famous poisoner during the Renaissance period. But it turns out uh, with research that there are just as many men who are poisoners. And I think probably in oh. the book, it's actually more men who I've covered as poisoners than women. Okay. So it's definitely an equal opportunity murder weapon. Mm -hmm. So it's an equal opportunity. It's women, women aren't to blame for that. I, I didn't really know. I always just assumed that most serial killers were men from their makeups of FBI stuff. Um, I know my mom tried to poison me a lot, but she was just a horrible cook. But I do love my mom. But when we were kids, uh, don't don't get me started. Um, if death row, if people would be on death row for uh, for uh, bad cooking, my mom would be on death row. But she's a wonderful angel of a woman, otherwise. But just not the cooking part. Uh, <laughs> I have an iron stomach. You could pour acid into my stomach, and I'll live. Uh, I drink bleach just 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 to keep my uh, my stomach up. Um, so that's kind of interesting uh, that uh, you know. I mean, technically, the people who make your food, I know, I know people like uh, Putin and stuff actually have, you know, taste testers. Kings over the years have had taste testers because, you know, food is, a, I guess, a great delivery of poison, especially if you eat at McDonald's, I guess. Oh, there goes the McDonald's crowd. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, is probably overlooked is you've mentioned serial killers, and certainly mm. there are serial killers in here who have uh, murdered multiple people. Uh, 
some maybe just half a dozen other people who have been suspected of killing hundreds of people mm -hmm. uh, and they definitely fall into the category of serial killers but there's also poisoners who are targeting a particular individual mm -hmm. maybe they're looking for an inheritance mm -hmm. and their rich relative is just not dying and so they're hurrying them along or they're trying to get rid of uh, a lover that's uh, decided they don't want to be involved with them anymore uh, so there are murders that are just taking out specific people and that's the only person they've murdered. So different types, it really depends upon what the goal. Yes, some people definitely were serial killers and just were rampant in the killing. Others were poisoning particular individuals that they wanted to eliminate. Wow. Yeah, there's some people that, uh, wasn't that Durst guy, uh, the billionaire Durst guy or he was I don't know if he's a billionaire multimillionaire he recently died but he somehow a lot of people that he'd known had had passed away his spouses and girlfriends and stuff um it, it's really interesting so you talk about in the book uh I don't know if he had used poison I'm just digging uh but uh, many of the killers in the book are healthcare professionals doctors and nurses what the hell's going on there it's a good question. I think this is something that's been around for a long, long time. Uh, even Sherlock Holmes noted that uh, doctors uh, are the worst killers because they have knowledge and they have the ability to carry it out. And I think that's still something that's not changed since those times. Uh, doctors tend to have uh, a thought that they are cleverer than most people mm. that they're not going to find be found out that they can use their specialized knowledge to kill someone and no one would ever figure out that they'd killed someone um some doctors certainly or, or healthcare professionals there's nurses as well tend to have a complex of i'm taking people out of their misery um the so-called angels of death uh, that come in and really assume that they're trying to kill people just to put them out of their misery. Uh, other people, um, one example would be Beverly Allett, who decided that she was going to kill a lot of children, and she killed several children. It turns out that she was probably um, affected by Munchausen disease, uh, what she would do would inject the people or the young kids in cribs who would come into the hospital. Uh, the kids would go into heart failure. She would rush in and save the kids, resuscitate them, and everyone would be thankful that she was such a great nurse. And in fact, one of her uh, victims' parents even made her a godmother because they were so grateful that, that she'd come in and rescued and saved their child, not realizing Realizing, of course, that the kid went into heart failure because of her. Uh, oh. She was eventually caught and sentenced and uh, was actually put into a hospital for the criminally insane, where she still is at the moment. So there's lots of reasons so. why different uh, healthcare professionals have gone into murder. Some because they wanted to get rid of a particular individual. Some because they just felt that they were so clever that they could get away with it. Note to self, block everyone named Beverly on Tinder. Um, the uh, just in case, you know, you never know. Uh, the uh, so, so what was her motivation there? Was she was she trying to be uh, set up a savior sort of scenario? She or? did have that was really what was uh, determined to be the rationale behind <laughs> it. She didn't really have a desire to uh, kill the individuals. She wanted to put them into severe distress, and she could come in and save the situation and be and look looked like upon a... as a hero. Wow, man, that's messed up. I think I've heard of that sometimes with the care of older people and uh and different things like that i'm trying to th think of what i'm referencing but i think i've heard of different uh issues like that that people have taken and done that, that is insane so um what did you hope people would get from this book i mean you might be uh inspiring a whole new uh, group of people or maybe uh, helping people understand what's going on and that way if my coffee tastes funny in the morning i should probably look into it 
Yeah, the uh, the lawyers <laughs> at the publishers uh, made me put in a disclaimer in the book that the uh, book was for entertainment purposes only, <laughs> uh, not to be as an indication as to what you might use. Uh, what, what I'm hoping to get out of this is really to get people to appreciate the body, um, mm. how it works. And for the most part, our bodies work really well. Mm. One of the things I also wanted to bring out in the book is that many of the poisons that I've covered and we think about as poisons and certainly have been used to kill people can actually be useful. Uh, one of the poisons that I start right off at the front is insulin. And oh, wow. we know insulin is taken by millions of people around the world every day. And it's really useful. And without it, they couldn't live. But you just have to take the right amount of insulin. If you take too much, it's going to kill you. Same mm. thing for a lot of other drugs. Um, digoxin is one of which is really important for people with congestive heart failure. It's a very important drug. Many people take it, but you have to have just the right amount. Too much digoxin and you're going to have a heart failure, heart attack, and you're going to die. So a lot of things that we think of poisons if we use them in the right way and are used at the right dosage, you're actually really useful drugs. Yeah. Um, Does Viagra fall into that? Because evidently after four hours, uh, don't ask me how I know, uh, you have to go see a doctor and he has to give you some stuff. I don't know what that means. But uh, uh, no, that's a joke. You don't have to answer that. Uh, the next question I have is, you know, my old man, my father, rest in peace, um, he, uh, he hated taking, I believe it was Coumadin, which is a Coumadin that they take for blood thinning. Is that, yeah. am I pronouncing it right? Um, he used to always go off on it. He's like, it's rat poison. Ah. And my father hated doctors. He was very, he was into holistic medicine, which is the first problem, but he would always go off his Coumadin and then you have a heart attack or stroke and you, you'd be like, dad, you go off your Coumadin it's rat poison uh so it, uh, does that fall in that category what we we're talking about earlier exactly yeah if you just have the right amount it's going to prevent you having clots which can lead to strokes wow. um, but certainly if you take too much and that's how it kills rats is basically they uh, and are unable to clot their blood so we tend to think about things as what we refer to a therapeutic window uh, with drugs you just have to use the right amount just small enough to actually be of benefit. But if you add too much, it's not going to be good. And this, this is true for many, many drugs that most people, uh, many people will take. You've just got to get the right amount and take the amount that the doctor prescribes. Just don't go thinking, I've not taken the drugs for three days. Now I'll just take all those three together because uh, that doesn't work. Yeah, the uh, I, I think we found a, a, a fan for you. Uh, I put up his post earlier. He says, I think I have to get this one on my Audible account today. But uh, I don't know. Uh, well, well, I just want to put his post up here. So when the FBI looks into this, they, they have a trail. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, Al. Thank you for your comments. We certainly appreciate it. But uh, uh, note to self. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it, it, this seems like something that people are really interested. They're really interested in, I guess, the macabre of it. And, uh, you know, and people love thrills and, and all that sort of good stuff. Um, the uh, uh, Let's see. Um, what sort of poisons uh, or uh, poisoners do you think interest the public the most, I guess? I think it's interesting in that you see a huge spectrum of people that have been involved with poison. Mm. Uh, there are certainly political assassinations with poison. Mm. So we can think of um, the Skripals, as we were discussing earlier on. Mm. Um, Georgi Markov, who was killed with ricin. Um, we also think of people like Sasha Litvinenko, who was poisoned with radioactive polonium. So mm. there are people interested in the politics of it because mm. there are uh, um, government-sponsored murders in that sense. There are also people who really are serial killers and just go out of their way to see if they can kill as many people as possible. Wow. There are also human interest stories, people who have been in affairs and then just wanted to get rid of their lover. Uh, there's one story about uh, a woman who was having an affair uh, with her lover who was 
called Lucky Chima, uh, which, as you can imagine, if you're going to go by the name of Lucky, it's probably not a good uh, idea. Um, you're going to be unlucky at some point. And he was poisoned with uh, a chicken curry. What? Uh, so. Uh, Do I need to start avoiding uh, Indian restaurants now? Well, if you, if you look, uh, go through the book, uh, it's actually interesting how many different things were poisoned. There were certainly cocktails that were poisoned, uh -huh. scones, coffee, tea, um, umbrellas, curry, hot chocolate, um, have all been means of uh, dispensing poisons for particular people. Oh, you're going to put me on a new diet. That's what you're going to do. Uh <laughs> Why do you think it's it certainly is going to get rid of uh, overweight if you stop eating? That that's well, that's true. Work. Yeah, or if you get poisoned, it'll fix your overweight problem too. You won't um, have to worry about it. That's you won't have to sure. worry about it at all. Yeah, yeah, you get a nice, good-looking skeleton going on there in your casket. Um, uh, how did you choose the eleven? I think it's eleven top poisons. Gosh, that that was actually really hard. <laughs> was this a favorite thing? Like your this person? There was <laughs> there was some that I, I just felt had to go in. Um, certainly the rice in because um, I remember that from when I was in high school. So I was really interested in that. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were just you just had to put in uh, the polonium with uh, Sasha Litvinenko. Um, he was actually given that in a pot of tea oh, in wow. a London hotel. And I was actually <clears throat> fortunate enough to go into the uh, hotel restaurant where he was poisoned uh, several years That's later right. after they had uh, cleaned up the uh, restaurant. And so that was kind of fun to be able to go there and yeah. sit at a table just a few feet from where he was poisoned uh, to see that. So, so that had to go in. Um, other poisons, one particular individual is uh, Thomas Neal Cream. And he was called Neil, so I had to include him uh, in the book. He was mm -hmm. a, he probably was one of the first serial killers. Uh, oh, wow. He killed in Canada. He killed in Chicago. He killed in Edinburgh. He killed in London. Uh, probably was the first recognized serial killer. Wow. I also wanted to just get some example of the different ways in which poisons kill, because poisons kill in lots of different ways. So I wanted to select poisons that I could highlight different aspects of the body and highlight how different poisons can kill in different mm. ways. Um, certainly there are lots more poisons that I've not included in the book. If I put in everything, the book would be up to three or four volumes. Uh, so I had to trim it down and some of them are just favorites that I really liked and just felt I had to include. Others I just wanted to include because it exemplified different aspects of how the body worked. Yeah. I know a lot of I know a lot of people who killed across the nation, but mostly they were comedians. That's a comedian joke if you don't understand killing and dying on stage. Uh if you don't understand that joke, you will. it's mostly for the comedians that are gonna get that one. Um the uh no, this is kind of interesting. Um how come you didn't cover Chipotle uh, and the burritos? <laughs> I cover curry, so that's kind of spicy food. So it, it's in the same ballpark. Wait, wait a second. I'm getting a notification. The attorneys just gave us a C and D. Uh, no, I mean this. I mean the, they they were in that joke over there at the, at the Chipotle. Uh, last time I took a picture of myself in front of one, uh, people like. Uh, Hey man, uh, call the suicide hotline. It's okay, man. Um, so you know, there you go. Uh, yeah, and I mean, technically, there there is a poison that kills. Like if you eat meat, what is that called? The natural. If you eat bad meat, um, that's that's technically a poison, right? I don't know. Yeah, there are certainly lots of. Uh, well, these would be toxins because they're okay. natural chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, Meat that's gone off tends to be uh, infested with bacteria, and they can cause all sorts of problems. Uh, lettuce is a particularly bad one. You talk what? about Chipotle, and bacteria in the lettuce give off oh, toxins. Because you don't wash it? Because you don't wash it, okay. and those toxins uh, can get into the body and cause all kinds of imbalances in the way in which the body handles fluid. Mm -hmm. And so it can lead to vomiting, diarrhea, all those kind of nasty things. This is why I never eat salads. You never trust a salad. That's why I just stick to 
I don't know, burgers or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm not winning anywhere where I'm going with this. Uh, so what, it teases out a story, if you would, uh, that you found most interesting or one of your favorites. I'm always worried when you say you have favorite poisons, but uh, I, I'm, I'm far enough away from you. <laughs> favorite stories. I won't necessarily favorite poison. Uh, one of the, the stories that I, I find really interesting um, is a guy called Edwin Carter. Uh -huh. uh, who was ill and went into hospital. The went into the ER, was very seriously ill. Uh, doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Uh, his hair started falling out. He was very ill. He had sores on his throat, uh, was having difficulty speaking. The doctors tried every test that they could think of, took all the blood work that they could, just couldn't figure out what was wrong with him until one of the doctors who was visiting him decided that he looked kind of like some of his patients that were undergoing chemotherapy oh, wow. and wondered if he had radiation poisoning and so called in and started to try and work out what was going on and as the doctors were trying to figure out what was going on with him uh, edwin carter said my name's not really Edwin Carter. I'm actually an ex-KGB agent, and wow. I've defected, and I'm a secret agent for MI6. Wow. So the doctors thought, well, is this guy hallucinating? Is the disease that he's got just affecting his mind, or, or is he really an MI6 agent? Mm. He gave them a phone number, a phone number to MI6, who turned out to be his handler. <laughs> and he indeed was uh, an ex-KGB agent, Sasha Litvinenko, who had come over and defected and was now working for MI6. Wow. He had been targeted by uh, the Russian government. Most likely, his assassination was ordered by Putin. And he was the one that uh, met some Russian agents in the Millennium Bar in a hotel in London and was given radioactive polonium wow. in his tea. Wow. Uh, and as you can imagine, there's uh, very few things that would be more British in a way to commit murder than putting poison in a pot of tea. Um, it was eventually figured out that he had uh, radiation poisoning. He was uh, irradiated with a particular poison, polonium, which turns out that the only place on the planet you can get polonium is from a nuclear reactor in Siberia. So it, wow. it's a, a bit of a giveaway. Yeah. Um, but uh, they can was, trace it, right? The signature of it. Right? You can trace it. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually found traces of radioactive polonium on the seats of the airlines that the assassins had come across from Moscow into London wow. and then traveled back. Uh, the room w in which they stayed in whilst they were at the hotel had to be completely demolished and taken away because there was so much radiation. Uh, it's clear that they had no clue as to how dangerous the chemical was uh, that they were using. The assassins probably died, didn't they? Or, I don't know. They were very ill. They did get back to Russia. Um, the British government tried to have them extradited. Uh, the Russians said, uh, no way. Um, yeah. So Welcome to Russia. Uh, th that was one of the, the interesting stories that uh, just was fairly recent, um, only occurred in uh, the last 10 years or so. Yeah. We need to get your book in the hands of some Russians these days. Um, and uh, I don't know. Of course, of course, the favorite over there is uh, a lot of people seem to fall out of windows and uh, second story third story balconies <laughs> i heard a joke once about russia that that the that in, in most countries the higher up you can go the more expensive you know to the penthouse the real estate is in russia it's the lower uh penthouse at the ground floor that you want <laughs> because you don't fall out of windows accidentally uh, <laughs> kind of interesting you know it, it was interesting to me with the russian thing that how blatant it was and how how it was it, it, there was no attempt to really hide it for the most part uh especially if they were caught because it's really the message that it sends and the power of that message as opposed to just you know poisoning one guy or making everyone shake in their boots at, at the uh at the power of that so it'll be interesting to see what happens on that front uh anything more you want to touch on before you uh you go out 
Well, I just want to uh, let people know that the drugs that they're prescribed are generally prescribed by a qualified doctor and to take them at the right dose that's prescribed for them. And they'll be perfectly safe. Um, just don't go taking uh, too much of it. Uh, mm. And also watch out for what plants your neighbor might be growing in their garden. And be nice to your doctor and pay your bill because, uh, you know, you never know. That guy can turn <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably have that nurse when I'm old and dying. I'm going to have that nurse. That, I don't know. It might be good that I get a nurse to poison me. I might be begging her, please poison, honey, kill me. Uh, kill me now because I don't want to be in this nursing home. Well, just um, make sure you get the right poison. Some poisons you definitely don't want to have. Uh, strychnine is one of them you definitely <laughs> don't want to have. That's really nasty. Cyanide, yeah, that's going to kill you within a few minutes. That's so what you want. You if want you're going to choose stuff. one, I I'd go for cyanide. There you go. There you go. I should have been a Russian operator back in the day. So we've had FBI agents on the show. So uh, note to the FBI, we've triggered every single word you could possibly trigger on. <laughs> On their thing, uh, we've had a few FBI people on, so we're good people. Darn it, we're uh, this is just an interview. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming on. We certainly appreciate it. You know, we've had some fun with your book, and and uh, hopefully people keep it as an entertainment thing. Well, thanks so much for inviting me on. It's been a great experience, and yeah. I hope people enjoy the book. There you go. You got 111 ratings so far. Amazon. So at least there's a trail of people that are reading this. So that's that's probably good for the FBI. Uh, but yeah, it, wow, your people love this read. It's it's interesting how fascinated people are with with some of these dark things like CSI and poisoning. <laughs> So I, I should point out that everybody in the book who was a poisoner was caught. Ah, that's that's a good point. I like that. That's a good disclosure for the attorneys in the show. <laughs> So don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Be good to each other, man. I mean, then those life insurance, they, you know, if you get that life insurance, you go cash that thing. They know, man, they see you coming. All I know is if I ever get married or get a girlfriend, there will be no life insurance policy. I'm doing nothing to encourage. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me, you're on your own, honey. Uh, so that's my policy. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Give us your uh, .coms, your internet uh, connections, so people can find you on the interweb, Neil, and uh, don't drink anything that they can you. It's www.neilbradbury.org. There you go. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Go to youtube.com for says Chris Foss. Hit the bell notification button because uh, it makes you belong to that family that loves you but doesn't uh, judge you. But you don't belong unless you hit that bell notification. That's the key. That's that's what you have to. That's all you have to do. You don't have to join. You don't have to. Uh, you know, offer up virgins or do any sort of thing. You just hit the bell notification up on the YouTube version and you're in the, the Chris Voss club. Uh, go to, <laughs> it sounds like a cult at this point. Uh, go to goodreads.com where it says Chris Voss. See all of our uh, groups, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all those great places. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be good to each other. Damn it. I really mean it this time after this show uh, and stay safe. Uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in everyone. Bye-bye.